about five years ago, I made this solar generator build, and I put it on YouTube. It's been, I think, probably one of the most popular builds on YouTube. We've been using this lately with a deck that I built out here by our pond, and we don't have any electricity out here, but it's nice to be able to plug stuff in when we're out here on the deck. And it, it's been handy if I want to run any small power tools, it handles that no problem. Of course, laptops, phones, all that, you could do that all day long. But because it's been several years, and I thought it was time to do some modifications to it, and figured I'd start with what the most requested features were. And lithium ion, top of the list. When I first created this, there wasn't a lot available in lithium ion batteries in terms of plug and play that had their own built-in management system with standard 12 volt systems. Uh, since then, there's been a lot of them. And that's the most requested feature I've ever had with this system was they would like to see this with a lithium ion battery option. So today we're going to do that. And I also have another one coming with the second most requested feature. A lot of people were concerned about the airflow in this unit. And I wanted it to be completely weatherproof because I wanted to be able to leave this outdoors in storms, in all weather, and not have to worry about water getting into the system. Everything has a thermal overload protection in it. It shouldn't ever actually damage anything, but it might shut off if it gets too hot. But a lot of people said they would really like to have ventilation option. So I'm going to have another video coming soon that shows how we can do an add-on that adds some forced air ventilation with a control module that will allow the fans to only run when they need it. I didn't want the fans to be running all the time because it just wastes electricity. And with a solar system, the last thing you want to do is waste electricity. So the battery we're going to replace with this is a 100 amp hour, 12 volt. It's a direct swap in. It has its own battery management system. Uh, it's supposed to have a 10 year life and it's way, way, way lighter. This thing, um, I, I didn't look at the specs. I'd say it's probably about 15 pounds. Um, the optimum that's in here is I think 60 pounds. So it's a big difference in weight. And additionally, this is rated as 100 amp hour, and the one that's in my um, original build, I believe that's a 55 amp hour unit. This will also work with my battery expandable units to those as well, so that if you want to do the battery expansion units and have multiple batteries that are all plug and play with the system. And if you're new here and you didn't see why we built this with two connectors, the reason behind that is, is I can use this as a separate battery unit. If I want to jump start a vehicle, I can just take this out. Or if I just want to run a 12 volt load, I've got some USBs on here, a cigarette loader, your basic 12 volt stuff. I could plug it back into my solar generator to recharge it with these quick connectors. We're increasing the battery capacity and the runtime for the solar generator. By having two of these connectors, I can run as many of these units as I want. I can daisy chain them. And all these batteries will be wired in parallel. So we're not increasing the voltage, we're just increasing the load capacity. Um, but theoretically, you can connect as many of those as you want. You are gonna reach a limit in a, how much your solar panels will be able to recharge. But you can easily add three, four, five of these things. And if you've got a, a good wattage panels and good full sunlight, It'll take longer, but it'll eventually charge them all up and you'll have a very nice battery bank for running your loads when, when you don't have a lot of sunlight. Okay, to uh, convert to the other battery for the lithium ion, we're gonna pop open our cover. We're gonna make sure our solar panels are not plugged in. That way we've got no power coming into the system. And we're gonna start with unhooking the negative terminals, 9 16 Go ahead and unhook your negative cables first so that now there's no voltage on any of our components in there. Now there will be a charge on your capacitors in here. So if you did short against this with something, you would see a big spark. And that's because there's some big capacitors in this unit. Let me go ahead and unhook our positives. Same way. And then I have a wing nut on the back side of this case for my battery mount. So once we have that loose, this will pop open just like that. And we can just set that off to the side and our battery is ready to come out. So this will fit down in all the way to the very bottom. Might have to move that wire a little bit. So we're gonna hook it back up in the exact opposite order that we unhooked it. So we're gonna start with our positive cable. There should be two of them. and then our negative cable. If you see a big spark, that's probably just your inverter charging up. That capacitor probably drained while you had it unhooked. Now the new battery is half inch connections. Go 
ahead and get them nice and snug. Uh, you don't want them too loose. They can get hot. Bad connections if they're loose. You should not be able to wiggle the wires at all. Uh, you should just be able to move the whole battery when you wiggle on those wires. And you don't want to over tighten either. You don't want to strip out the threads. That should be good right about there. All right. Once we've got that all back installed, we just go ahead and plug in our solar charger. Really happy with that trailer connector. That trailer connector has been working really well. And we should be able to go ahead and turn on our inverter. It turned on. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in a fountain uh, out in the pond just to see how everything seems to be working with a load. There we go. So we're running a, a half horsepower uh, pond fountain, running off of the lithium ion battery, and we're recharging with 200 watts of solar panel. So the 200 watts of solar panel may not be able to keep up with that fountain full time, but we should be able to run the fountain for quite a bit each day and then allow the solar panels to bring it back up to charge. So I think that's it for this build. I'll have the uh, ventilation uh, upgrade coming next. If you guys aren't already uh, subscribed to the channel, please do. It definitely helps. And uh, let me know what else you guys would like to see. Any other upgrades that we could add to this unit or uh, anything else, really. 